In this next video, we're going to be talking about temp tables and why they're so important. Now, when you have a temp table, let me just make sure I'm in the right database. We'll go to our Acme database. We know how normal tables work. You can say select star into, and I'm just making this table name really easy to spot. We'll just call it AAA. I'm doing select into AAA from customer types, and then I'm going to say select star from AAA. Now we know how this works. Basically, I run this, and it, it makes a real table in the system, and then you can select from it, just like any other table. The problem that we know is that if you hit F5 and run it again, you get an error. It says there's already an object named AAA in the database. But that's okay, that's what we would expect. But now, notice, here's some code that's slightly different. Let me just um, select star into, now here's another table from customer types, and then we're selecting from the table. The only thing I did, I did two things. I changed the name to BBB instead of AAA or, you know, triple B. But I put a hash mark in front of it. Hash mark, if you can see that, or the pound sign, or the tic-tac-toe board, the orthothorp, if uh, the octothorp, whatever it is, if you like. I said octothorp, orthogot. Well, okay, so anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these two lines, and I'm going to say select star from hash mark BBB, blah, 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 or you select into, and then do a select from it. So I run this, same thing. Works like a charm. Now, you would imagine that if I try to run these two lines over again, you know, I should probably run into the same thing, because there's a table created with this name, so it's probably not going to like the idea that I'm trying to do it twice. And lo and behold, there's already an object named this in the database. So, so far, we've done two things with a real table and with a temp table. We did a select into, we populated it straight from what was already in the customer types table. And in each case, it created a table, we were able to select from it, but then when we went to go rerun the query, we couldn't re-select into because the tables already existed. So at this point, what's the difference between a hard table and a temp table other than a hash mark? Well, there are a few key differences. For example, let's open the Acme database and look at our tables. And here we go. Now here's our triple A table, see? But now where's our, where's our hash mark BBB table? It's not in there. Wait a minute, let me, you know, refresh. Did I miss it? Did I? I mean, this is a small database, so whether it alphabetizes by the B or the hash mark, which would really be the hash mark, it would be up here above it. It's not there. Where is it? We know it exists because we got an error saying we couldn't recreate it, so it has to be somewhere, for now, as a hard table. It's persisting for the moment. In SQL Server, under databases, this isn't always visible to everyone. You have to turn it on, but there's something called system databases. There could be hundreds of user-created databases, but there's only one directory that says system databases. You open that up, and look, master, model, msdb, and then, oh, temp database. What does this do? Well, we open this up. Notice how it has tables, but it also has temporary tables. Well, let's look up what's in temporary tables. And, ah, here it is. So we knew that we created a table, but it's a little different. We called it hash mark BBB. Well, here, it's calling it hash mark BBB, but do you see in the tooltip the long series of underscores? And then there's this like crazy cryptic number at the end of it. That whole thing is the table name. Now wait a minute, just, just a minute. If we're going to be using temp tables, we don't want to make things complicated. We don't want to have to remember that big long name every time we do a select. But you see, we didn't. SQL Server tracked that for us. This uh, hash mark BBB is kind of like a pointer to that long, disgusting, ridiculous table name. And you're probably wondering then, still, what is the benefit? Why? Why would you use a temp table? It lives in a different place, and it gives it a different name. It seems like it does everything else already that a hard table does, so why would we do this? Well, here's why. But in order for us to do this, we have to sort of copy this and do something different. We have to open up another query window. Now, SQL Server likes to put the next query window to the left, but I'm going to roll it to the right, okay? So here's our first one. Here's our second one, and I'm going to cut and paste. Now, I'm just going to run the top two commands. Now, we're in the same Acme database. So again, if I try to say select star into AAA from customer types and then do a select, 
this line would run, but this one here is going to crash before this one has a chance. And the reason why is we already did a select into. It's not going to work. We get an error. There's already an object named AAA, Dave. Come on, what were you thinking? Now, pay attention. When I run this next line, select star into triple BBB, you know, from customer types, everything we've looked at has been pretty much the same, except it puts it in the temp database and it gives it a funny name. But if I'm trying to do a select into, well, that table exists, right? So we should get an error, right? Wrong. It created a table. Well, wait a minute. It didn't do that for the hard table, but it did that for the temp table. That's because the behavior is different with temp tables than for hard tables. And once you realize the difference, like fireworks will go off. If I go back to the temp table directory, you're probably wondering, did it overwrite the other table? Did it take somebody else's data and wreak havoc with it? Or, let's just refresh. Look, there's two tables in here now. There's a BBB blah 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 004, and then there's a new one that ends in a 6. See, what's happening is, in each of these windows, okay, in this one it's got the same name, and in this one it's got the same name, but it's pointing to different tables, and SQL Server is able to keep track of that because what it's doing is it's making, this is like a synonym, but it's making a pointer to this table, whereas this guy is making a pointer to that table. And SQL Server is able to keep track of that um, by something called a connection. This is not the connection or the when you're authenticating to first open up SQL Server. But see, each of these windows actually has its own connection with SQL Server, and they're different. Here's why that's valuable. If you're doing something over here and somebody else is doing something over here or they're on another machine or they're logged in from like a different state or country, they could be messing around in any database and they could create be creating temp tables, whatever they want, with the same name as yours, but what you're doing will not affect them and what they're doing will not affect you. Because even though hash mark BBB is the same as hash mark BBB, these tables names are different. And the good news is, in your connection, you don't even care what the real name is, because this can find it. Now, all that being said, so now that's a huge thing. What that means is that when you make a temp table, you know, it's basically going to act like a real table in every way that you want, except it's protected by scope. It doesn't matter where you make it, it lives in the temp database. It doesn't matter what you call it, it's going to wreck the name and call it something else that you don't need to know. But if anyone else makes a temp table with the same name, it doesn't matter because they're going to have a different instance or, you know, a different, a different version of that. And it can look, their schema could be completely different, but it's not going to overwrite what you're doing. That is immensely powerful. Y you should really play around with these and see. But now here's, here's the last part of the lesson. So why are they called temp tables? I mean, they seem pretty persistent right now. I mean, they've been up the whole time we've been doing this video. Well, here's why. In this table triple A that we have, if I close this window right now and just shut it down, it might ask me if I want to save it and blah, but, but this table is going to be with us forever. We're stuck with it unless I actually right click, you know, and say delete, or if I do a drop table AAA on that database. Those are the only ways to get rid of it other than like, you know, the building burning down. But notice what happens here when I close the window or close the connection. Hey, do you want to save your changes? Not really. So all I did is close a window, but watch this. See the 4 and 6? This is the one that we created first. Now you see it, now you don't. So basically, when I close these windows, you know, do you want to save this to a script? No, I don't. Have a nice day. That's the same thing as blowing away the temporary table, it's the same thing as doing a drop table statement. So basically if I have a query window open and I'm goofing around and I create the table and it's really there, when I bail on the query window, that temp table is gone. Whereas, in this table, and I'll refresh just to be nice, AAA is there with us for the long haul. It really is a real table, it's persistent, and it's only going to go away if you command SQL Server to do that. The temp tables, they come and go. They're temporary. They just live as long as your connection to SQL Server lives. 
If you're in a stored procedure, it's a lot faster.